Okay, so now we're going to go on to experiment two, where we're going to roll a car down a ramp. For this part of the experiment, you're going to need some popsicle sticks. You're going to need the tape measure. Uh, you're going to need a straight ruler. You're going to need the car um, from the kit, the little pullback car I used last time. You're going to need your pocket lab sensor. I'm going to want you to grab uh, one of the styrofoam cups, one of the bigger ones, and the box that the thermal, uh, the thermometers are in. It says thermo on it. Uh, and you're going to need the box itself. And you'll notice what I've done is, is I've cut the box apart such that I could lay it flat. Now, if you have your own piece of cardboard and uh, you want to just simply use, uh, you know, an old Amazon box or a thin board, uh, that's perfectly fine as well. But if you cut your box apart, right, I just cut the tape on the bottom. I cut one side of the box where the little flap was, and then I have it laid out. Uh, we can make our ramp out of that. Uh, for the moment, to construct our ramp, we won't need the tape measure or the ruler the car or the pocket lab or this. So the first thing to do uh, when we build our ramp is we're going to need to reinforce the ramp itself. Uh, to do that, we're going to use our popsicle sticks. So you'll notice we have these gaps in here. And so what we're going to do is just take the popsicle sticks, lay them in here. And then I'm going to just use some tape to stick them down. So I'm just trying to get it kind of on either side of that gap. And this will just provide a little bit of reinforcement uh, so we can make our, our ramp. And you're going to want to do one on either side of the gap. You don't want to go too far out to the edge. Uh, you're not too worried about making it rigid there kind of more towards the middle. And again, I'm going to do it here. And here. You're then going to repeat this at the next space down. OK, so you can see here I've completed taping up uh, the gaps in the box so that I have everything done and I still have this last part is free to flip over. Next, what you're going to want to do is turn it over and we're going to want to mark three locations uh, on our ramp. One, well, I guess four locations. One is going to be at the point where it can flip or if you've used your own piece of cardboard and it just ends here, you just want to make sure that if you use your own piece of cardboard, that the overall length of what you have is around um, 80 to uh, 100 centimeters long. Uh, in this case, uh, our box, uh, the length of our ramp will be something around uh, 84 centimeters. So if you use your own box, that's fine. Just make sure that from here to the bottom of the ramps, around 80, 90 centimeters is fine. So I'm going to mark a point at the bottom. That's going to be the bottom of my ramp. We could think of that as the finish line. I'm then going to pick another point about a third of the way up and mark it. If the gap is convenient here. A point that's about two thirds of the way to the top. This is going to be the top. And then a line that's about six and a half to seven centimeters from the top of the ramp. While we have it flat here, it's convenient to measure this. And again, we provided a tape measure. Note that on the top we are in inches. You can measure in inches and then convert into the metric system centimeters if you like. Or if you realize just on the bottom of the ramp, uh, we have uh, centimeters already right in here. It's right here. And so if I measure, say, from this point here to this exit point, I notice I'm at 31 centimeters. Uh, you're you're going to want to measure to the nearest millimeter. And so what I've done is I've marked that this point is 31 centimeters or 0 0.0310 meters. Uh, sorry, that's upside down, but it's the way the ramp is laid out. Similarly, I've measured to the next point up and to the third line I have here. Okay, so now we're going to be at the final part of building our ramp. So what you're going to want to do is, is tape the back end of your ramp 
probably to a wall or a door or something that works pretty well. I'm on my bench top here, so I have to use my ring stand, but you're going to want to tape it and you're going to want to tape it so that this back height is about 20 centimeters off the, from the floor, from the table. You don't want to go too much higher than that. We don't want our ramp to be too steep or we're going to have a hard time making our measurements. So, you know, 18, 19, 20, 21 centimeters, something like that. But try, if you can, try to make it 20 centimeters. As you can see, our ramp's still just a little bit floppy. So here's where we will use our styrofoam cup in our box. So if you take the styrofoam cup, you can put it in there. And again, so you're seeing it kind of go kind of straight down. And then you can use your small box and slide it under just to provide a bit more reinforcement. And our ramp is actually fairly rigid when we do this. You want to make sure that you don't have a big hump or something's flat or coming down. You're trying to look at it and try to see does it go fairly smoothly down towards the exit. Now as for this exit, this little bit of cardboard that's flopping here is a little bit of a problem because uh, it, it's springy and it will cause our measurements not to be quite as good. So uh, what I've done is I'm just simply going to fold it underneath so that it sits and again, I'm positioning that box that I had in there just to kind of give it a little bit of reinforcement so it's fairly straight and so we have exit. Now we do have a little bit of a lip here and as we see when we take our measurements, we'll have to be careful about that. It will cause a little blip in our data, but it's something we can easily avoid. And so there I have my ramp, it's constructed. I'm going to then take my car and I'm going to just put a bit of tape on top of it and I'm going to take my pocket lab sensor and attach it to the top of the car like we did in the last lab. And again, reminding ourselves that I want to have that little part facing forward uh, as we go with our exit. As we'll explain the next part of the experiment, you're going to set it so that the car starts um, with the front edge at the line, and then we're going to let it go and we're going to record the position as a function of time. And if you remember, I need some kind of a screen or something for that pocket lab to reflect off of. Again, here I've used a board uh, to cause a reflection. This could be a wall, it could be a book. Just make sure it's something nice and big and kind of flat. I'm a little bit close here. It would be nice that if you had a roughly a meter between the end of your exit ramp and your board, the more distance you have here, the more uh, data you will be able to get. So I would say go somewhere between, say, um, 60, 70, 80 centimeters up to a meter, but don't definitely don't go less than 50 centimeters. I also recommend you don't go too much more than a meter because, again, there's other things that will act on this and your data might look a little bit curved and you want to be careful for that. When you're doing this measurement, you're going to be asked to record two distances. One is the distance up the ramp, which is what we wrote on our car, uh, ramp before we even put it together. And the second is the height. And what we mean by the height is it's going to be the distance from the table to where you're launching it. So if I go here, I can see that that's roughly going to be six and a half centimeters, although I do have to be a little bit careful. There's a gap here. So you want to do that a little bit more carefully. You can set it here. Of course, if you have a um, little bit of eye, or you can just measure this distance and add it in when you're done. So this distance we're calling the height H from the table to where our starting point is. And this distance along the ramp we're calling the, the length L. And what you're going to do is, is you're going to calculate potential energy either using H or using L and try to determine which one is the more correct one to do. Now, when you do this experiment, and I'll repeat this caution in the next video, this is going to be a real experiment. So even though we've made it idealized by saying the only force acting on the car is gravity, um, there are really other things going on here. So our numbers may not perfectly agree with each other, so you're going to have to make some judgments when you're making the comparisons. But that's part of doing experimental science. And if you're not sure, it's a good time to reach out to your instructor if there's anything that, that is confusing.